Thank you for asking me to speak to you today about uh, the use of tumor treating fields on a clinical trial for patients with uh, brain metastasis. We currently have a clinical trial in patients with uh, a mutation nonspecific non-small cell lung cancer. This is a phase three trial in patients with up to 10 brain metastases who are randomized to receive stereotactic radiosurgery for their brain metastases, uh, followed by standard of care or standard of care plus the use of tumor treating fields. Tumor treating fields is an interesting concept to test in this, con in this context because this is a non-invasive uh, local regional antimitotic treatment that has the ability to induce DNA damage and therefore cause replication stress in cancer cells. And we know that the brain as a compartment is typically seeded with micrometastatic disease at the same time when we can visualize macroscopic disease in the brain. The field of radiation oncology has shifted and changed to much greater use of stereotactic radiosurgery for patients with brain metastasis. And this is driven in large measure by the need to decrease cognitive dysfunction that is induced by whole brain radiotherapy. The unfortunate consequence of this shift has been a significantly higher increase in intracranial failure rates because microscopic disease is of course not targeted or treated with stereotactic radiosurgery. And the avoidance of whole brain radiotherapy allows this microscopic disease to grow out and therefore cause intracranial failure. Therefore, intracranial failure has become the primary endpoint of this particular trial. The trial will enroll 270 patients, as I mentioned, with either a single inoperable lesion or from two to 10 metastases that are reasonable for stereotactic radiosurgery. It's a one-to-one -one randomization to radiosurgery followed by standard of care or tumor treating fields. The tumor treating field technology, as most people are now aware, is FDA approved for glioblastoma uh, and is recommended as an NCCN category one adjuvant therapy for patients with newly diagnosed glioblastoma. It also has shown activity in multiple in vitro and in vivo um, uh, data sets in lung cancer and in lung cancer models, as well as in phase one, phase two clinical trials in non-small cell lung cancer. And recently, the FDA approved it for use with chemotherapy in patients with unresectable malignant pleural mesothelioma in something known as the STELLAR trial. So based on all of these uh, preceding pieces of data, we felt that it was reasonable to incorporate tumor treating fields in the context of this trial to try and diminish intracranial failure. The primary endpoint is time to first intracranial progression, but patients are allowed to continue to use the device until second intracranial progression, at which time crossover to the use of the device is permissible for patients in this trial. It is an international trial being run in the US and in Europe and is currently accruing patients. We do not as of yet have any preliminary data to discuss, but it is an interesting concept that hopefully will show us improvement in intracranial progression, thereby diminishing the burden of retreatment that these patients frequently require. The trial is currently open and accruing. We are looking for patients to enroll on this trial. Uh, we do not have preliminary results to discuss, but we do not have any untoward toxicities that we have noticed to date. And so we welcome and uh, request your participation in the trial and uh, referring patients for enrollment. Mm -hmm.